First off, um, communications really counts when we look at what's happening uh, with the battles over collective bargaining in Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, thousands of union members attending rallies day after day, and some of that energy is spontaneous and a product of events and, and circumstances. But reaching those uh, union members and, and uh, directing that, that energy and takes communication, regular outreach, um, grooming activists, and uh, you know, giving them regular rec recognition. And we found with our own member polling, these are, you know, this is from our member polling, uh, that there's a strong relationship between communications and activism. So across every category, you know, whether it's using stickers and signs, talking up the union, phone banking, um, distributing literature on the job site, door knocking, the more communications, uh, you know, quality communications of different um, types of pieces, um, the more likely they are to do those things. Text messaging gives you an opportunity to reach your members. Uh, this chart is also based on surveys of our members. Um, uh, you know, we know our membership lags the general population a bit on internet usage, uh, but it's still such a high percentage uh, that we'd be hampering our efforts not to use mobile, email, and the web to reach our members. And you know, we know we can tell there's a strong percentage of our members using mobile, nearly as many as those using email. It's 42 to 47, uh, and this is a way to reach them anytime, anywhere, and they can reply either immediately or at their convenience. And as a construction union, um, most of our members aren't sitting at a desk, um, aren't able to check email frequently, uh, so mobile outreach can be really key to reach them. Moving on to um, an example of. Uh, some of our affiliates that are using mobile, our Eastern Missouri uh, Training Center. This is where our members and apprentices um, are trained in their new construction skills. Uh, they've adopted the use of mobile to reach their members. Uh, they're collecting those phone numbers when members initially fill out their applications, and the information is then entered in their database. And they're using the text messages to fill class vacancies and send out notices of scheduling conflicts. So it's real basic, but it's working for them. Now, previously, they were making personal phone calls, and you know they were you know leaving a lot of voicemails. Um, you know, a lot of people screen their calls, and they're finding that with text, their their response rate and it has it has increased, and they're getting responses much faster as well. And another example, our local 78 here in New York City. Uh, our, whose members uh, do hazardous waste removal. Uh, they've been using um, mobile commons for text messaging for about a year now. Uh, and they've, they've also found it really has increased um, their response rate and a bit of, been a big time saver um, compared to you know, making personal phone calls, using robocalls calls and um, other, other means. Um, and they've, they've been using it for rallies, um, most recently on May Day, event turnout, um, notices of membership meetings, picket line messages, you know, being able to instantly uh, turn out members or let them know a picket is canceled, that, you know, that can be really key if you're in negotiations, you don't have time to send a letter or make those personal phone calls and you can't expect members to be checking your website uh, constantly. Uh, and they're also, they've also found that they can kind of gauge, uh, you know, how many people to expect based on, you know, a number of um, the replies that they get. Uh, and within the mobile comments interface, you have like an inbox where you can, you know, see all the replies together and, and be able to instantly respond to them one on one. Um, I, I also want to highlight uh, Local 78 has a high percentage of uh, Spanish speakers and Polish speakers, uh, as well as English speakers, and you know that kind of adds a layer of complexity to messaging or communicating with their members. So. Um, you know, texting works really well for this because they can, uh, you know, simply send out, uh, you know, set up a group and send out separate broadcasts with those messages in the appropriate languages. And, you know, part of that goes back to, you know, what goes into their, you know, data collection efforts at the beginning and they're, you know, collecting that um, language information in their membership database from the start. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do that segmenting effectively. Uh, so I'd encourage you to think about that, you know, tracking aspect if you do have a lot of language diversity. And then more on that issue, you know, we, you know, in the many cases where we, we don't have the language information for members, um, you know, you still have options. You know, we, 
needed to send out a rally message um, and for a local that had a majority of Spanish speaking uh, members. So we, we simply sent out the, the broadcast and then uh, enabled an auto reply function. So if people wanted to see it in English, they could just reply ENG and then they get the, the message in English to them. And then the third uh, and last example I have is our uh, Laguna's Latino Caucus. Um, has been hosting citizenship fairs in several cities for Laguna members and their families uh, to receive free technical assistance to determine eligibility and learn how to fill out their forms to apply for U.S. citizenship. Uh, and the caucus ha uh, has used text messaging as part of their comprehensive uh, turnout campaign to identify and turn out members for these citizenship fairs. And for our most recent event in Washington, D.C., the um, uh, Baltimore Washington District Council um, wanted to first get a sense of um, how many members would be interested in attending the fair. So they started off with a letter to their members. They got, you know, maybe 100 or so um, people responding by letter. And, you know, out of uh, maybe 6,000 members, and, and they knew that this wasn't, you know, everybody that would be interested. So they, they uh, it followed up with an automated or robocall and asked people to press one if they're interested in the citizenship fair. And we got about 600 responses to that. And then we did a live phone bank where organizers and staff actually called these people that said they were interested and you know, set up appointments with about 90 people for this is the citizenship affair. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> and um, you know, we we ended up, we then of course used the text messaging for reminders and ended up with a couple hundred people at the, the most recent event. You know, they came from all around, brought their families and everything, and um, it was very successful. Um, and that's kind of, you know, uh, you know, text doesn't replace, um, you know, in some cases it's going to be more effective than an automated call or a personal phone call. And, and in some places it's, it's more of a reinforcing thing. You want to integrate it with your, with your entire communication strategy.